if you're into PCB design, you've probably heard about multi-layer PCBs. But have you ever wondered why we use 6-layer PCBs and how they stack up for the best performance? Today we are going to talk about 6-layer PCB stack ups, how to design them properly and why they matter for high-speed circuit and signal integrity. Whether you're a beginner or a pro, by the end of this video you'll have a solid understanding about 6-layer PCBs. A 6-layer PCB is exactly what it sounds like. A printed circuit board with 6 layers of copper separated by insulating material, also known as dielectric layers. Compared to a 4-layer PCB, a 6-layer PCB gives you a better EMI shielding, improved signal integrity, and more routing space, making it ideal for high-speed circuits, RF applications, and complex design like microcontrollers, FPGAs, and Wi-Fi modules. Now let's talk about the most common 6-layer PCB stackups. There are multiple ways to arrange the layers, but here is the most popular configuration. Layer 1. This is the star of the show. All surface-mounted components like resistors, capacitors, chips are soldered here. High-speed signals like a Wi-Fi antenna feed or a microcontroller's clock line are routed on this layer. Copper thickness is typically 1 ounce, but can go up to 2 ounce for a higher current. Precision is key. Traces might be as fine as 0.1 mm to maintain a 50 ohm impedance. Directly beneath the top layer is a solid ground plane. This layer is crucial. It ensures clean signal return path, reduces noise, and acts as an EMI shield. The spacing between this and layer 1 determines impedance. So we usually see about 0.2 mm of FR4 dielectric here. Without this ground plane, Expected crosstalk, signal reflections, and all sorts of electrical nightmares. Now we get our first hidden signal layer. Since it's between two solid planes, it's well shielded, perfect for lower speed signals like I2C, SPI, or analog lines. It also helps keep the top layer free for more critical traces. The trade off is wires have to reach in, making routing trickier. This is where the board distributes power, 3.3V, 5V, or whatever your circuit needs. Instead of long traces, we use solid copper fields, keeping resistance ultra low. Some design split this layer half 3.3V, half 1.8V. But be careful, a broken power plane disrupts return path and increases noise. This layer picks up overflow routing. If you're dealing with a dense design, say a BGA chip with 100 plus pins, this layer keeps things organized. It's also great for differential pairs like USB 3 or HDMI, thanks to its shielding. But every via here adds capacitance, so careful planning is key. The flip side of the PCB. This layer is used for less critical signals, maybe connectors or LEDs. Some designs use it as a second ground plane to improve EMI performance and balance the board, preventing warping during fabrication. It's also a great place for test points, making debugging much easier. Now let's talk about impedance, because if you're working with high speed signals, this is make or break for your PCB design. Impedance is basically how much a signal resist changes in voltage and current as it moves through a trace. In six layer stack up, this is critical because we have multiple signal layers between power and ground planes, which can affect the way signals travel. For example, let's say you're routing a USB, HDMI, or RF signal. If the trace width and the spacing aren't designed properly, you'll get reflections, crosstalk, and signal degradation. That's why we calculate impedance, to make sure everything stays within the spec. A lot of factors come into play here. Trace width, copper thickness, dielectric constant, and the distance between layers. A typical 50 ohm controlled impedance line, for example, might need a 0.1 mm trace width with a 0.2 mm dielectric layer underneath. But if you change the spacing, even slightly, your impedance shift. And that's the problem. So how do we get this right? That's where EasyEDA and JLCPCB's impedance calculator come in. And that's what I'll show you next. Before sending your board for fabrication, you need to match your impedance to avoid signal issues. JLC PCB has an impedance calculator that does the math for you. 
Just enter your dielectric constant, copper thickness and layer spacing and it tell you exactly how wide your traces should be. This part is really important because if your impedance is off, you'll get reflections, signal loss or even total failure at high speeds. So take a few minutes to double check these values and make sure your trace width match what the manufacturer recommends.